And welcome everyone to News West 9 Game Time, where we bring you all of tonight's high school football action and scores from all across the Permian Basin. It's been a crazy nightly. Yes, I'm Trevor Tankersley. And I'm Lee Small. We're glad you have us on for our second show of the night. The only station in town with two full shows, but we've got a lot of action to get to tonight. So Trevor, let's start it off with the Game of the Week. This is the Academy Sports Game of the Week. Our game of the week this week is a big one in the 5A ranks. The Abilene Eagles, state champs and looking to move to three. Oh, we got some problems here. Ranked 10th in the state came to Midland tonight to take on a surprising 7-0 Midland Bulldogs league. They were ranked 13th in the state. They were picked last in the district by a lot of people. So uh, impressive enough. Out to Grande we go for this one. Midland 2-0, Abilene with the same mark. First quarter, Eagles wasting no time putting points on the board. Hunter Martin finds the end zone on third down and make it 7-0 Eagles. Midland Christian, though, would get a break later in the first half. Christian Valero is going to miss the short field goal attempt to keep it a one-possession game. Abilene's offense, though, would continue to roll on. Herschel Sims this time to the end zone. 14-0 Abilene at this point. So at this point, you're thinking it might get out of hand, but Midland makes a comeback with a gutsy drive. Kier Woods on third down and short, picking up the conversion. Then it's Tyler Middleton on the pitch. He reaches for the pylon right here, just gets in. 14-6. Abilene leads after the missed extra point. After getting a nice three and out from the Abilene offense, under two minutes left in the half, Middleton takes the shovel pass up the middle, breaks a few tackles for a nice game. Then after this, watch this play here. Kier Woods is going to the air, and check out the grab by Donovan Anders going all out to make that grab. That's a top play nominee right there. And on the next snap, Middleton would take the ball in himself, 14-12, but it wasn't enough tonight. Impressive showing, though, by Midland regardless. They fall tonight to Abilene. Final there, 28-18. All right, over in Odessa, both Lee and Permian were still both looking for their first district wins of the year. Lee had lost to two teams on the year. They lost to both of the Abilene schools, while Permian, on the other hand, had lost to Cooper and then had lost to Midland last week. Let's get to those highlights here as we head over to Ratliff Stadium. Big game tonight from Ratliff. Certainly don't want to drop to 0-3 in district play. Uh, that, would, that would not be good. With some trickery early on in this one, the fake punt on the first possession. Barrett Brown runs for the marker, and he is going to get it. Great job there checking out where the first Gary down Gary Gaines doing a Les Miles impression there. Yeah, really. That the was bad great. header. <laughs> but there they go three and out later and have to punt to this guy. Darian Long catches it on the run, takes this one up the left side for the score. What a play there as he's going to run it in for the end zone. This is not the first game Lee's special teams unit stepped up. They stepped up big earlier on in the year during a big win on the road as well. After another three and out, they punt to him again. To him yeah, this is surprising after the first one. Then he'd run it inside the 20-yard line. That would set up good field position for the Rebs. Permian, though, makes a stand, forces a 29-yard field goal from Miles Vincent. That one goes straight through. So they've got three points on the board. Later in the first half, Permian strikes. Greg George takes the direct snap up the gut, beats the defense into the end zone. Touchdown, Panthers. But Lee, in the end, would get their first district win by a count of 20-13. to 13. Staying in the 5A ranks, we'll go to 0-2 Odessa taking on 2-0 Cooper in a game the Broncos desperately needed to keep their playoff hopes alive. First quarter, Clay Nicholas. He's going to find Kier Sonier, and as you mentioned, I think he's French. <laughs> he gets away with a bump and takes it to the house. 6-0 Cooper after the mixed extra point. Next possession, they would get another score. Nicholas is going to hit wide open. Derek Footer, not over French. the middle. Not French, not no. French. For another touchdown, they had their way tonight. 13-0 at that point. Cougars still rolling in the first. Alfred Cooper rolls out to the left. 17 yards, takes it to the end zone. 18-2 at that point. Now, Odessa didn't go away, trying to get back in the game. Ivan Suvia, Bradley Marquez's replacement, who's on the sideline with injury, tries the left side, finds some room all the way down to the one-yard line. They got score, in there. Score on the next play, and Cooper takes care of Odessa after that touchdown tonight. Final score there, 45-8. All right, over in Seminole tonight, the Indians were hosting the Andrews Mustangs. Last week, the Stangs knocked off Fort Stockton 51-28, while Seminole fell to Monahan's 28-14. Both sides looking for win number two in district play. Out to Wigwam Stadium in Seminole. Defense, the name of the game. Trevor, gotta love those defensive battles here. Kyler Gilbreth going to feel the wrath of the Indian defense. Defense is 
really great, but they don't make for good highlights a lot of the time. No, not really. It's like field goals. Andrews would return the favor on the next <laughs> no, play. Seven three points. Second Jacob first for the loss. Speaking of, of, of field goals here, Andrews, you know, Jacob Higgs uh, with the heck uh, of a kicker there. Yeah, absolutely. 53 yarder earlier. All right, year. we're getting off track here. Still scores in the first. Seminole going for the ground. Watt is speed up, picking up the first down. Seminole still trying to crack the defense early on. We're a little bit behind, but follow me through. Burchup finding Caleb Kodiker through the air. Indians would fail to capitalize on the play. Closing moments of the first quarter after a seminal interception, Espino finds a hole, powers his way into the end zone, 7 nothing lead to close out the first quarter, and Andrews, this is a very good win, especially on the road, they win 28-21. Staying in the 3A ranks tonight, the Monahans Lobos, currently at 8-0 and ranked in the top 10 of the latest AP poll, look to avoid the upset tonight as they visited Coach Shad Hanna and the Greenwood Rangers. Rangers have upsets on their mind. Out to King Stadium we go for this one. There is the coin toss and Monahans looking to improve you, on their top 10 ranking. You know it's better than field goals and defensive battles? Coin toss highlights. Coin tosses are <laughs> always good. You get both teams in there. Monahans first play will pitch it to Pedro Cano. Takes it in from 20 yards out and the Lobos up 7 nothing. More Monahans, and I'm going to talk really this really? happens every week, by the way. So, yeah. these long touchdowns, what are you going to do? I don't know. Pedro Cano is going to take this one 8-0. 80 yards up the left for the score. Nobody's going to catch him. and be 13-0 there. Monahans after the extra point. Later in the quarter, Lobos are going to be at it again. Logan Mitchell on the receiving end of the reigning 3-8 Texas Player of the Week. Wade Rourke throws the touchdown pass. Lobos in control. And Monahan stays unbeaten with the impressive 54-6 win over Midland Greenwood. All right, big spring on the road against Abilene Wiley. Steers 1-1 one one in district play. Coming into the evening, first half, now Bulldogs would get on the board first. Joel Nasser finds a hole, and he exploits it 7-0 after the extra point. Big spring answers, though. Devontae Anderson deep to Michael Menafield, and they'd finally catch him inside the 10-yard line. Not easy to catch Two him. Two we talked about earlier Yes, this he's a top Five runner really in the state in the 100 meter dash so not easy to track him down this time though Anderson with the keeper he'll take it into the house extra point no good 7-6 Wiley at that point and now it was 14 to 6 and Wiley gets another score as Colin Harris finds Brant Johnson for the score and Wiley would go on to the, win this one by 11 40 to 29 all right Trevor we got one block down plenty still more ahead on game time that's right we've got much more highlights and scores on the way after this two-minute timeout. 